Welcome back to CBS Sports HQ presented by Timu. Right now you're looking at the top five teams with the most cap space available. The Texans coming in at number five. A big offseason for the Bears. They have a lot of decisions to make. They're coming in at number four. The Patriots, the Titans coming in at number two. We can use that money to perhaps build around Will Levis. We know that uh, Tony Pollard is going there. That's just coming down. And number one, the team with the most cap space available, 96 million, is the Washington Commanders. So let's talk about that team. Number one on the list, we have Brady Quinn back with us and Pete Prisco joining us on set. Tommy Tran, I'm Jacqueline Diagostino. I feel like new is the theme for the Commanders. They have a new head coach and Dan Quinn uh, going to get a new quarterback likely in the draft here. But with all of this money, $96 million, uh, Brady, I almost called you Danny again. Why do I keep doing that all the time? <laughs> um, they look so is, much alike. They do. <laughs> what is priority number one for the Commanders in your opinion? Uh, well, the trenches. That, that's how I'd phrase that. They they need to spend money on the offensive line, especially considering you're drafting a number two overall quarterback who's going to be a rookie, and then both edges. But the trenches are where they need to spend the money. They need to build this team from the inside out. They have the cap space to do so, Pete. But that center over on the left side is all, are all free agents, and obviously both edge rushers as well are free agents, given what they moved on from last year in those two stars. So that's where this money needs to be spent. Absolutely. You have to get a pass rusher or two. Uh, they have some young guys that they like, but you have to get some, some real help there. Uh, up front, but the offensive line. I mean, if, if you're particularly going to draft a young quarterback, you have to be able to develop the line in front of them. So they have skill people. The skill weapons are fine. I just think they got to get better up front offensively. Protection. Remember last year, Sam, he took a he took a beating last year. Sam I mean, Howell. Yeah, yeah, Sam Howell just took a. But it, just a physical beating, and I think they have to get protection. Sack the front. most out of any quarterback, right? Yeah, and he held the ball. Don't, I mean, let, let's be real. There's a, a young lot of parties involved. It was <laughs> offensive line, quarterback, scheme, and all that. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. New quarterback, new head coach, new ownership, which could lead to new fans or at least old ones coming back. Uh, the whole DMV area, of course, people know about the whole Redskins commanders transition. Speaking of transitions, let's talk about the Tennessee Titans. We learned the news about Tony Pollard, of course, with Tajay Spears going to be the, the backfield. You're shaking your head, Pete, because you said Tennessee was one of the more attractive head coaching vacancies at the time before Brian Callahan took over. A lot of it had to do with the cap space, but you're shaking your head when I put well, the cap Pollard space, thing. the quarterback, who I think is going to be a big time player. So it is an attractive job. And they ended up getting a really good head coach, by the way, and his father, who's a great offensive line sure, coach. Chill, yeah. And you spend money on a running back as your first free agent in the door. I don't get it. The, the offensive line needs help in the worst way. I mean, if you're going to have that quarterback, you better have the offensive line in front of them. And they don't right now. It was bad last year. They have a good young guard in Skaronsky. He'll play left guard. They need to get a tackle. I think they can get him in the draft where they're picking. They'll be able to get a left tackle, starting left tackle. But you might as well get some other guys up front. Get some bigger, stronger guys on the right side of that offensive line. And now Petit Ferrer missed time last year. He'll come back and be the right tackle. But in the interior, the center, they could use help there. They need help up front. They also need a speed outside. They're slow. It's not a fast team. They need help outside in terms of the speed. And then you can always use pass rushers on that team as well. They, they need an edge rusher, too. Outside of the offensive side of stuff you mentioned, they need an edge rusher. They also need some secondary players. So uh, that side of the ball needs a little bit of work. But this is a, a team that I don't want to say they're in full rebuild because they've, they've got their quarterback, at least they think of the future. But there's a lot of needs. Uh, they're fortunate to have the cap space that they do. And they're fortunate to be in the draft position that they do because they can solve some of those issues issues as they head into the Callahan, uh, excuse me, Callahan family first year there in Tennessee. So it looks like the Titans have their quarterback of the future when it comes to the Bears. They might be transitioning to uh, Caleb Williams. That depends. It's still the Justin Fields of it all, what they're going to do. They have that number one pick, a lot of cap space, Pete, for the uh, Chicago Bears. This is a great situation. <laughs> I mean, you look at the big picture. I'd love to be running the Chicago Bears right now because you have the number one overall pick. You have a number nine overall pick. You have cash. You have the ability to go sign free agents and yet you still look around and you have key positions already filled you have a young second year left tackle you have a right tackle who played and started as a rookie you have uh, in the secondary you have two starting cornerbacks one's in his what fourth year one's in his sec coming in their second year those guys matter those positions matter and you have sweat who can rush the passer who you traded to get now what do you need you need another edge rusher to go with him and i would go sign daniel hunter that's what i would do if i'm the chicago bears i'm getting daniel hunter on one side and sweat on the other because they have some good young defensive tackles, by the way, who they drafted as rookies last year and played a great deal. This team is moving in the right direction. I said it earlier, I'll say it again. If Caleb Williams is what they think they can, he can be, if they draft him first overall, which it looks like they will, 
this team will be a playoff team consistently for a long time. I think what they do in free agency, too, will give you a sense of what they're going to do at, at number one and number nine. I mean, I think we all know if they move on from fields, clearly it's a quarterback at one. Even if they don't move on from fields, they wait to try to move on at some point. If they they find a quarterback needy team post-draft or due to injury, they could utilize that option. But if they do end up going, you know, with an edge rusher, for example, like Daniel Hunter, as you mentioned, you're probably thinking wide receiver then at nine, um, given the value that that would bring to both Caleb Williams and, and that wide receiver bring them in together. But uh, that'll give us a little bit of a hint. Uh, but as you pointed out, they're pretty well set at this point. I mean, as, as far as the you know, positions of need, you still could bolster the offensive line a little bit. They signed a running back, which is a little bit perplexing only because they had some young, good young players uh, that you know they would go with. Now, the thing I'll say on that point, though, is it is not a deep class at the running back position in the draft. So it is a robust market for the free agent running backs that are out there. So if you're going to go find one, you feel like you need one, maybe that's the, the rationale for it. And clearly the Chicago Bears have the cap money to spend. So I would like to see the rest of it, you know, again, we got a running back now, but edge, off offensive line at this point, um, and then maybe wide receiver, depending on how they feel about that number nine pick. And if they can get the receiver they're looking for there, would rather go with maybe an edge rusher to pair with Montez Sweat. And it is a deep receiver group, so you, deep. they could take a wide receiver at nine and take another one in the third round and maybe have a couple guys that you can add to that group. I think you bring up an interesting point in terms of the running backs, because, Pete, if we go to the Houston Texans, by the way, they're a team better than any of the ones we just talked about. They had a home playoff game, and they have C.J. Stroud which is now in a rookie deal. I, I bring that up because people are like, well, if you bring in Saquon Barkley to, to pair him with Tank Dell, C.J. Stroud, Bobby Slowick, what they could do with Christian McCaffrey. Not, now you're giving me a yes with this running back <laughs> bitch. Not so much when we did Tennessee. Well, because I think if you look at, at the way the Texans are constructed right now, the one thing that's missing is the running back. Now there's talk of Singletary coming back. Uh, he's an unrestricted free agent as well. But if you can add Barkley and let Singletary go out the door, I'm getting Barkley. I mean, Barkley's a better player. Now the deal has to be right for the organization so basically the, this deal that they're seeing out there the, basically the running backs are getting three years 24 million Barkley might get uh, three and 27 because he's a little bit better than those guys but not much more than that if he's looking for more than that I'm not bringing him in if he's willing to come in on that and I'm the Texans I'm bringing Barkley into the building so I got Damian Pierce though he ran pretty well for them yeah. at times last year I'm not sure that's as big two of a years priority. ago two years ago he was really good yeah we well, even even spot work though yeah it's, you know again it, I wouldn't prioritize that they've got some secondary concerns with some free agents too, the linebacker position as well. Obviously, with uh, Grunard leaving and going to Minnesota, there's an edge rush that, that could be filled there. I would focus all my attention right now on the defensive side of the ball if I'm Houston and try to build up that roster uh, and then look back in through the draft maybe as far as bolstering the running back position. And with Tank Dell coming off the injury, mm -hmm. you still could look at another receiver as well. I mean, they could add another one. Even, even, you know, you can never, with that quarterback, you can never have enough receivers. And, uh, as far They brought Schultz back, mm -hmm. which was a big part of what they're going to do offensively, but you can never have enough receivers receivers he is coming off an injury so that is a little concern yeah, Noah Brown's a free agent yeah. so and he yeah. played yeah. A, a pretty big role especially mm -hmm. as the injuries mounted up for them yeah. at the wide receiver this year so we're going from the teams who have the most amount of money to spend to the teams that have the least amount of cap space in the bottom two on the list the Dolphins and the Chargers the Chargers of course we got a, a new head coach in the mix we have Harbaugh with the Dolphins um, losing the first round of the playoffs to the Kansas City Chiefs we know Christian Wilkins no longer in Miami going to the Raiders but um, a lot of work to do to get under the cap ready for both of those teams? I think the team that's in the most trouble is Miami, uh, in part because they've got to make a decision on Tua, so clearly if they want to extend them, it's, it's going to cost, cost them a pretty hefty penny. Uh, we, I'm going to keep reiterating the fact that the Daniel Jones contract by the Giants now has really put teams in a tough spot because you know, Tua has done way more during his time as a starting quarterback for the Miami Dolphins. So him and his representation are going to be trying to surpass that with the Dolphins. And it's just, they're cash strapped right now. So they've got to make some, some tough considerations on their roster. Uh, the Chargers already have their quarterback, you know, under contract than Justin Herbert. So different situation. Now there, they still need to cut some players. They will today. And, and Bosa and Mack. And, and they're going to have to backload them. But if you're Jim Harbaugh coming in there, I think he feels pretty optimistic about building back this group through the trenches. You know that's how he's going to do it. Um, and it, it might take a year or two, but he's done that everywhere he's been. Yeah, and Mike Williams will clear up when they get rid of him. They'll clear up a bunch of cap room. They'll clear, if they get rid of Mac or Bosa, one or the other, maybe both, you'll clear up a bunch of cap room. But then you don't have any pass rushers, so you have that problem going forward. It, it's not a great situation, but you're right. Miami has to extend the quarterback. That's why they're making That's why Christian Wilkins is now with the Raiders is because they wanted to keep him, but they have to make room right. for the quarterback. And it's almost one of those situations with Tua. You're damned if you do. 
and you're damned if you don't because he isn't one of those elite quarterbacks. He's not one of the top guys in this league, but you're almost going to have to try and pay him like it because he's not going to sit there and take Daniel Jones, he isn't taking that deal. Who's not? Tua? Tua. Well, he shouldn't, but what I'm what I'm saying is, is think about that. The average annual value of that contract is $40 million a year. But it's only a and so, so, so So now I'm saying Tua's going to be looking for something beyond that, right. $45, 50000000 million a year. Yeah. But whether he gets it and or not. Whether he gets it or whether he yeah. signs it, depending on the structure, is, is another story. Baker didn't get it. Baker didn't, but I don't know that is he was Tua, going for that Tua, either. I think if he would have... Is Tua and Baker, are they, is I, Tua better than Baker? I think if... If you Baker would have so. pressed, mm -hmm. if Baker would have pressed the free agent market, I think he could have gotten that. But I don't think he wanted to do that. I think he likes where he's at in Tampa. But is two who's better, two or Baker? It's, I mean, two has been more productive, productive, but, but it, it's, it's close. Tough. It's, it's, it's close. close. So, you know, he's not going to get that. He's not going to settle for that contract. I no, he's, he's definitely not going to. And so, again, the greater point is the fact that yep. you're going to have to be able to shell out average annual value at least forty-five million. 50 million if, if you're, if you're two, if that's you probably the minimum. Damned if you don't. It's one of those, he's one of those quarterbacks where you are, that's the exact way to sum it up. Damned if you do and damned if you don't. And I think the other perspective is, good for him, great timing. Yeah. You know, he's, he's played well enough at the right time too where I see this big jump in the salary cap where now the team has to commit to you in a big way, one way or another. He, he didn't show up in the big moments though. I mean, that, that's concerning. There were are you talking games. about the game he played in where like 70% of the people who got frostbite are now yeah. feeling like an yeah. Yeah, there were games where he it's didn't that game? in a big moment, okay. and that's the concern about him. And again, I, you almost have to extend him, but you're going to be wondering Your sample about size it. is the one playoff game where no, people are literally were, amputation on their frostbite. On the road in other games, he wasn't great either. You guys are in mid-season form. We're in the off-season, and Pete Briscoe and Brady Quinn <laughs> going mean, at it. Uh, by the way, he wants to pay every quarterback. Give them all fifty million. It was funny. A year. You were out in Kansas City. It was like sixty degrees, <laughs> and somehow you you got frostbite. I guess. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, he had a beanie on. Yeah, yeah. I did. Yeah. Yeah. When it's cold, I put a beanie on. <laughs> that Baker Mayfield deal, by the way, three years, hundred million dollars worth, up to one fifteen. Pick six podcast. Scan the QR code. Check them out.